So uh, let's do a Cambridge paper. Okay, this is combined science. So let's do a Cambridge paper. Cambridge is not very different from Zimsec. Okay, so if you're doing combined science Zimsec, then you find this useful. I actually find the style of testing very elaborate and very informative. So you realize um, that uh, you can also learn a little bit on uh, practical um, skills that you need uh, in your paper three for Zimsec. Okay, just from the way that they ask the questions, because some of them they are the questions they are very non-routine. What it simply means is that these are questions that you have to reason from what you be presented there. So um, you don't find those situational situational questions in paper one in uh, Zimsec. But then if you learn them from paper one in Cambridge, then you're likely to uh, get at least a jump start on uh, answering experiments or investigating experiments for paper three Zimsec. Okay. So without further ado, let's uh, try, let's uh, start from question one. It, said what, it says, what are the characteristics of living things? Okay, so there's this mnemonic phrase that I was taught. It's called Miss Neg. Okay. So mnemonic phrase, it's simply, it's simply a it's simply a phrase that you remember so that you can recall a lot of information okay for example if I want to remember the characteristics of living organisms I just have to remember Miss Neg and then I think M stands for movement okay R can be reproduction okay then S can be uh, you can say stimulus or sensitivity any or living organism it uh, responds to changes in the environment changes in, in the environment they're called stimuli okay if uh, it's one if it's singular we say stimulus and then N stands for nutrition any living thing has to uh, feed okay and uh, E means excretion So any living thing has to get rid of uh, toxic wastes from its body. Okay. Then we have R, uh, this time it's respiration. So this, this respiration can be aerobic or anaerobic, depending on the, on the organism. Okay. Then G means growth. So already you, you have some of the stuff there that's uh, already there. So you just have to pick out um, what they are. So here you have... Um, you have excretion is there, growth is there, movement is there, nutrition, you have reproduction, respiration, and uh, sensitivity or stimuli. So obviously, uh, one is, is correct. Okay. This, this was a very difficult question because you also you had to check all of them. So remember, Miss Neg, this mnemonic phrase here, yeah, that's what you have to recall, and then you can uh, fill in the blanks and say, okay, what does R represent? Let's uh, quickly move to question two. Question two says, uh, this is a diagram and it shows a plant cell, okay? The stuff inside the plant cell, they're called organelles. Mm. Yeah, you also have to go and check the spelling because I'm lousy at this, but uh, they're called organelles. And you asked which structures are also found in animal cell, okay? In an animal cell, which structures are also found there? So it, it also helps to uh, label what structures you have here. So this one is the nucleus. This one must be the cell wall, okay. And this one must be the cytoplasm. They just didn't uh, label it, but then essentially you have cytoplasm there. And this one must be the vacuole. So here, um, the stuff that you find in a, in a plant cell, uh, in an animal cell, as well as in a plant cell, there you need the nucleus obviously the nucleus is common for all cells okay and then you also need the the cytoplasm the cytoplasm it's common for all cells the cell wall it's only common in um, plant cells it's called uh, that's what we call cellulose uh, it's a source of soil cellulose in uh, from plants and the vacuole it's very large and it's typically found in uh, animals but then you also you it's typically found in plants but you also rarely you find a vacuole sometimes in in animal cells, but then they'll be ridiculously small. Okay, this large vacuole it's uh, it's only found in plants. You in at least in general you don't find a vacuole in in animal cells. Okay, so obviously you'd uh, have one in three. So that's a. Let's quickly move to question three. 
question three. Question three says, what are the smaller molecules uh, that make up fats, protein, and starch? Okay, so fats here, obviously it's not glucose. Okay, so obviously it's one of those. Okay, so now we are dealing with this one only. Uh, we are eliminating. So protein, protein is what? Is it amino acids or, or glycogen? It's obviously amino acids. And then when you when you get here, no, obviously you'll be choosing this. So starch obviously be glucose. Okay. So there's there's a way in which some science sometimes um our Cambridge questions they actually help you out. They give you more clues. So for example, if uh, you had gotten this one right and then you didn't know this one, then you could have just checked this one. Starch it's obviously uh, the little stuff, the small stuff that make up starch. It's it's glucose. Okay. Then you tick uh, that box and then we would continue. Okay. So let's uh, move to the next question. Next question says, uh, what are enzymes made from? Okay, what are enzymes made from? So enzymes, they are made from protein. So just wait, I don't know what happened to my pen here. So enzymes, they are made from protein. Okay, we say that uh, in, actually in, in a definition of enzyme, we say that it's a globular protein. I want you to go and discover what this means. Okay, it's a globular pro protein that accelerates, or you can say speeds up. The reaction rate. Okay, and then uh, an enzyme. It's a type of a of a catalyst. Okay. Catalyst can be any chemical, it doesn't need to be a protein. So it can be anything, it can be even a metal. Okay. It would be a catalyst. For example, platinum rhodium, it's a it's a catalyst. So let's quickly move to question five. Question five says that the diagram shows a section of a leaf. This is very common, this one. It's it's a very common diagram, both for Zimseg and for Cambridge, okay. So please try to know at least you know the labeling and also the questions that you can expect from here. So there, there's this uh, question. Uh, question says which letter is the epidermis? So the letter which is the epidermis, it's it's B. This one is called the upper epidermis. Okay, it's called the upper epidermis, and uh, this one is called the cuticle. So the diagram shows uh, a section of a leaf. Which letter is the epidermis? We say it, uh, it's this one, okay? So it'd be B. This upper part here is called the epidermis. This one there, they're called the palisade. They're called palisade cells. So we say palisade mesophyll. Mesophyll simply means uh, inner cell, okay? So this, this one's, they're called spongy, spongy um, mesophyll. And usually there, is, there will be something um, globular here. And then we, we call that uh, the vein. So the vein you have xylem and phloem know what the xylem does and or what what the xylem do and know what the phloem do or the phlegm do uh or the, what the phlegm does and then here you have uh the uh low epidemics okay so and then there are other questions that they ask is which one is the highest uh number of uh, chloroplasts or which one is the site for most of the photosynthesis it's obviously in the palisade cell it's also the site where you find the most magnesium. Let's quickly move to uh, question uh, six. So the the yeah, the, ep the epidemics it's it's simply B. So um, this one says which which uh, which diagram uh, represents the digestion of food molecules in the alimentary canal. So um, in the digestive system essentially. So which which part represents the digestion of food? So you can start by eliminating this one because this one is synthesis. You see, yeah, nothing is no this this stuff. They they are broken and then they are actually grouped into uh, a globular uh, something, a macromolecule. So obviously, this one is synthesis. So you're looking for digestion is the breakdown of our food molecules. Okay, so we're looking for where it breaks down. This one also represents um, a breakdown. But then the problem now is that the stuff that we are getting do not correspond to the stuff that we started with. So you have our squares here. And here you don't have squares, you have some, some other uh, shapes as well. And then this one here, also same thing. It also suffers the, the same fate as this one. But then except for this one, 
the molecule actually changes as well and then it's still a, a, a macro molecule macro simply means big okay so uh, for this one now uh, the molecule it gets chopped into uh, various pieces and when you see the contents of the molecule it's it's actually uh, preserved you're not seeing some new stuff here if uh, there's one triangle you're also seeing a triangle here so this this one it's uh, it's it's correct it doesn't digestion it's a physical process it doesn't necessarily change the the chemical structure of um, of food it uh, simply chops the food into uh, smaller uh, molecules or smaller pieces okay so let's quickly move to uh, question seven what's the function of valves in the uh, circulatory system so the function of valves this is also a very common question okay sometimes they even uh, give you this and then they ask you what's the function of the of, of the valve so these are valves there's this little flaps here they are called valves and the function their function is to ensure that uh, you know blood does not flow backwards so when it uh, when you're pushing it when you, the blood is is going in this direction this is the you find yours you, you always find it in veins okay you find it in veins that's where you find this just because veins are low pressure low pressure canals low pressure blood uh, um, networks so the veins you find uh, you find valves there and valves they prevent backflow of uh, of uh, blood okay to ensure that blood only flows in one way okay so this one you can also say prevent backflow if you're preventing blood flow back flow you're ensuring that it uh, the blood travels in, in one direction so prevent back flow of, of blood this is another way to to put it but this is also a very common question so let's quickly move to question 8 question 8 says the graph shows uh, the graphs show the effects the effects of uh, different levels of activity on the rate and the depth of breathing okay which diagram shows the rate and depth of breathing during exercise and during rest so during exercise you're breathing fast so you're you're breathing fast uh, so the frequency that that uh, the number of breaths per, per, per second we call it the frequency so the frequency increases because you're trying to um you know your, your body wants more air so that it can generate the energy that can sustain whatever activity you're doing or that can at least uh, you know um, pay back the some of the energy expenditure that we have been done by an aerobic uh, respiration so that's why even when when you're climbing stairs your your knees they hurt why because there's accumulation of lactic acid okay so as soon as you uh, take rest the your, your body it's now in overdrive and it wants to compensate uh, compensate as much as possible so that uh, you know you can clear out at least some some of that lactic acid so the frequency increases so the frequency of breathing increases so the frequency uh, according to to this would be uh, the number of uh, sinusoidal uh, there's the number of ups and downs ups and downs up and ups and downs per second okay so it will, will q would be obviously this one since it's the highest frequency is the one that's most compressed so q is uh, what we'd expect for you when you're what when you're exercising so it's either this or this so you can eliminate these ones and then at rest we expect that uh, the frequency we have lowered so we want the uh, as much the least frequency as we can okay and then the volume of breath it won't be significant so the volume of breath for here the volume of breath is from 500 to 1500 here from the volume of breath is from 500 to 1000 so the volume is hasn't increased so which is uh, quite you know what we are going for so um, i would choose p so the answer would be would be c okay so again the frequency it means the number of breath per, per uh, second and then the amplitude which means uh, this up and down the distance the, the uh, difference between the okay so the year the length you're going up and down up and down up and down that's what uh, we are saying that for activity for high activity we expect it to be uh, greater because you want to increase the volume that you can uh, check in as far as um, as far as 
oxygen is concerned as far as air is concerned okay so that's it let's quickly move to question nine if the aerobic respiration was one plus two equal to three plus four which will show the correct um, equation okay so this is aerobic respiration they didn't say anaerobic so aerobic means in the presence of air so air is obviously low oxygen so yeah so it's definitely this one just by by looking at it so you can say it's either this one or this one so because uh, it contains con uh, contains oxygen so you need oxygen and then you're you're burning up what glucose so it's obviously this one so glucose plus uh oxygen you get uh, water plus carbon dioxide plus plus energy okay atp water plus carbon dioxide getting glu glu glucose and oxygen this is um photosynthesis okay this is photosynthesis so you don't want that let's uh quickly move to our last question for 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 the for the video so the table shows some data recorded by a scientist about a student the scientist then frightens the student okay so this is uh, what we're saying this is the baseline this is the how the the puppy size of uh, the the um the puppy would be this little um this little medium white uh blurby size the puppy and the number of other uh, the rate the pulse rate is the number of beats per, per minute okay so he's also um recording that so the scientist then frightens the the student uh, with a sudden uh, sudden loud noise which will shows the results immediately after the loud noise so the uh when when you when there's loud noise we say that uh adrenaline or the the fight fight or flight the fight or flight hormone okay so if you're doing um biology then you probably know about this hormone so the fight or flight hormone it's it's what adrenaline so this this hormone here what what it does is um it um it changes it uh, gives it makes sure that you get as much energy as possible so that you can either fight or you can flight so it uh, it makes the changes uh that would be necessary for that so we say that uh, you know it's it's a transmitter essentially so it enacts it starts a reaction that gives the um, uh, body a chance to either fight or flight so noise no noise it's actually one of the of the two fears that uh, everyone is born with so you'll be born with uh, the fear of noise and also the fear of falling but anyway uh, we expect this uh, the, this one more now adrenaline what it does is that it uh, increases the puppy size so if you are afraid of something suddenly your your puppy size they they increase and the, that's uh, an effect of of adrenaline and the pulse rate now it has to increase okay so this this one was 68 so expect it to be to be 8 uh, at this point so obviously you're dealing with uh, with d so that, that's it for this question uh let's continue this paper some some other time so maybe tomorrow or the day after uh, make sure you like share and subscribe